Hey yo, hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing Zero Hour Crisis in Time. Take a look at this comic cover right here. Now, Zero Hour Crisis in Time has been a story that I've been wanting to review for quite some time. No pun intended. However, I've been very reluctant on reviewing Zero Hour, and the reason is because I don't know exactly how to approach reviewing Zero Hour. See, Zero Hour, Crisis in Time, is one of those continuity-changing stories that DC likes to do. But unlike some of the other continuity-changing stories like Crisis on Infinite Earth, the best example, is that Zero Hour isn't quite as blatant and obvious with how it changes DC's history and continuity. Actually, you would actually have to go into other comics or even go online to see how it changes DC's continuity. At least at first. Another reason why I've been very reluctant on doing this review is because even though Zero Hour has a pretty basic story, its story is still confusing, and to tell you the story would probably confuse you. So are you confused on exactly the reasons why I haven't reviewed Zero Hour yet? Well, if you are, then don't worry, that's quite alright, that's normal. If you're not confused, then bravo to you. But the thing is that I'm reviewing the story now, so please bear with me because I'm going to do the best I can for this comic. So might as well start off at the best place, and that would be, why is DC doing a story called Zero Hour Crisis of Time, which changes the continuity of DC's universe, if just 9 or 10 years earlier, they already had the Crisis on Infinite Earth. Well, see, first of all, let's talk about the Crisis on Infinite Earth. A lot of people like to see the Crisis on Infinite Earth as one big huge reboot. And while it is kind of a reboot of sorts, I don't like to think of it that way. I like to think of the Crisis on Infinite Earth as more of a consolidation of continuity. See, in the Crisis on Infinite Earth, Earth 1, Earth 2, along with other Earths were merged together, basically merging the Silver and the uh, Golden Age together along with other characters from different companies that DC had acquired, like the Marvel family, Shazam, or the Question, or Blue Beetle, or Captain Adam, so on and so forth. So all these characters basically have the same history, it's just, well, the histories are all together. The continuities are all together. So while it is kind of a reboot, I like to still think of it as kind of a, a merging of history. Putting that all aside, that's not to say things weren't rebooted. Uh, several characters got changed drastically um, in their origins. The most notable of this would be Wonder Woman. Uh, Wonder Woman was completely revised and changed. However, some characters weren't changed that much at all. Batman. Although his history was updated, it wasn't overly that much different from his pre-crisis history. I'm getting a little off topic here. The fact of the matter is, is that the crisis on Infinite Earth was a change for the DC Universe, a, I hate to say this, but basically a reboot for the DC Universe, bringing it into the modern era. However, with the Crisis on Infinite Earth over, there still was a lot of loose ends to tie up with DC's continuity and its characters. So they decided to have Zero Hour to deal with those loose ends. Whether or not it actually ties up those loose ends well, you're just going to have to see. So, now I'm going to get into the story. I'm going to give you the most basic review of the story I can. Hal Jordan's still a little loopy from being Parallax. Yes, he's Parallax at this time. And he wants to recreate the world in his image, make it better. Um, okay, that's fine with me, whatever. So anyways, he tries to screw around with time itself. And because of that, there has been time shifts along the DC Universe. For example, uh, Dick Grayson Robin shows up and works with um, Tim Drake Robin. Okay. Barbara Gordon's Batgirl shows up again. And, you know, Hal Jordan from the past, when he first becomes the Green Lantern, shows up. And just all these different characters from all these different points of time show up. And a task force needs to be brought together to take care of Hal Jordan being Parallax. That's basically the story. There's a lot more to it, but I'm not going to get into it. 
because I don't feel like confusing you, and I don't feel like giving myself a headache. So with that said, exactly what changes happened to DC's continuity? Well, there were a few changes here and there, but some changes were like, Bruce Wayne never met the killer of his parents. He never met Joe Chill. So that basically throws Batman Year 2 out of the window and kind of makes room for Batman Long Halloween. Uh, Catwoman's no longer a prostitute. Hey, hey, good for her. And, well, they tried to fix Talkman, but it didn't work out well. There were other subtle changes here and there, and yeah, but it's really not worth pointing out. If you really want to see all the changes to continuity in Zero Hour, I recommend going on the DC Wiki and just going to Zero Hour. It's going to have a list there. I don't feel like pulling out my computer and giving you the whole list. And I'd rather you not know what the changes are going into the story. So, with that said, let's just jump into the good, the bad, and whether or not you can get it. Good. Well, it does try to tie up those loose ends that were with Crisis on the Earth. And some of them I'm happy with. For example, I'm happy Catwoman is no longer a prostitute. And I am happy that they did not have Batman meet Joe Chill, because in the end, we get Long Halloween from it. Uh, there are other changes that I'm okay with, and I am happy they tried to change stuff, uh, but it didn't quite work out the way it should have. Again, especially for Hawkman. Another good. Aquaman was in it. Okay, as you can see, there's not much good with it. So we might as well just jump into the bad. Bad. The story is a mess. And this has a lot to do with actually DC's editorial decisions. See, there's a big villain in this that was masked up, and you're not supposed to know who this villain is. Axel, or I don't know what the guy's name in general is, but he was supposed to be actually a former hero. But it was leaked that the actual person that was supposed to be Axel no, however you pronounce his name, was Captain Adam. So they randomly changed who this villain was just to surprise people. And it totally didn't work. Um, that's just an example of how screwed up this story is. The story makes no sense. It comes out of nowhere. You feel like you're picking up five issues into the story and you're in the middle of it, right at issue one. This actually feels like the crossovers in the satellite series that deal with Zero Hour should actually be collected with the main series because it would be a little bit easier to read. But the story is just absolutely freaking random and completely a mess. In addition to that, well, the characters are just really badly done. Particularly Aquaman. He's a loaf. He just stands in and does nothing. It's kind of funny that at one point that Wonder Woman actually yells at him to go to the hospital because his hand is missing and bleeding profusely. And random stuff was thrown in there too, like Power Girl giving birth. I know before this Power Girl was pregnant and all that jazz, but it's random to have her give birth here in this story because it really has nothing to do with anything. The end of the story is also just really bad. It's silly, contrived, and it's just stupid. You know, I'm not going to give it away, but it's just stupid. Whether or not you should get it. No. There's only one overall good thing with Zero Hour Crisis in Time. is that at the end of Zero Hour, they actually have a timeline. And the timeline gives you basically any information you need to know about the DC Universe. It's nice. A little bit of it's out of date. But, on a whole, it's nice, it's good, it's a nice thing to help someone who's trying to understand the DC Universe. But, besides that timeline, which, as I said, is kind of out of date, Zero Hour is a horrible story. Absolutely despicable. Who wrote this? Dan Jurgens? I don't believe that. Dan Jurgens is a great writer, very competent, wrote Boots of Gold and brought him into the fold. Help write the Death of Superman story out. How could Dan Jurgens fuck up on a story like this? Well, I would like to take Zero Hour to be an example. An example that no matter how good of a writer you are, or how bad of a writer you are, anything can happen. For example, Dan Jurgens, like I said, is a very competent and actually a very good writer, at least in my opinion. 
He brought in Booster Gold to the fold and did some great stories with him. He also wrote the Death of Superman story arc, and he's done a lot of other stuff sprinkled around the DC Universe. A great writer, but this is absolute shit. I don't fully blame Dan Jurgens for this. I, I feel as though a lot of this is actually DC's editorial decision. But the fact of the matter remains is that Zero Hour is a great example of the fact that you can be the best writer out there, and you can still pull out shitty books. Another example of this would be Jeff Loeb. Jeff Loeb is a great writer, in my opinion, up to one point. See, he did great stories like um, Superman, Batman, Public Enemy, Supergirl, Batman Hush, Batman Long Halloween, Dark Victory, Haunted Night, um, a lot of the early 2000 Superman stories. But eventually, his writing just started to suck. Hey, people had bad days. Although, some of this could be attributed to the fact that his son did die. But, I'm not going to get into that, because that's a touchy subject. The fact of the matter remains is he did such good stuff beforehand, it just totally devastated people on liking Jeff Loeb when he started doing shit. And people just downright hate him now as a writer because of that. Another example would be, well, Grant Morrison. Grant Morrison does fantastic work. He's a little crazy, but he does fantastic work. Well known for his runs on Animal Man, JLA, and his current run on Batman. But that's not to say that he doesn't pull out bad stuff. He has been known to pull out bad stuff. Some things he's done has been, been well, grossly bad. I could go on forever about who's had good stuff and who's had bad stuff. But the point I'm getting across is this. It's just because there's a good writer out there doesn't mean that they're always going to do good work. Zero Hour is a prime example. Poor Dan Jurgens because I like him, but I'm going to have to pick on you here. You did bad work here. So on a whole, Zero Hour Crisis in Time, avoid at all costs. My recommendation, go on Wikipedia and just look at what happens. It's better than reading this shit. It's $9 that you don't have to worry about losing. That's it. I'm going to end this review here. This is Andrew saying peace out now.